So over the summer, I did a little project called Happiness versus Wholeness, in which for me, I always feel very content on Venice Beach boardwalk, so I figured what better place to ask about happiness than a place where I feel most happy. I went around all day asking people if they considered themselves to be a happy person. I asked mothers if they thought they were happy, and I watched as their eyes wondered if they would be considered bad parents had they said, no, I am not happy. I asked homeless guys with nothing but the clothes on their backs as they said, yes, I am happy. I asked hip hippies, believers, dreamers, artists, those of us that fell somewhere in between. Overall, 43.2% of people said, yes, I am happy. 36% said, no, I am not happy, and 20.8% of people simply fell somewhere in the middle. By the end of this charade, I thought I got it. I thought I understood the role that happiness and materialistic items played with one another, or at least I thought. Now, through this day, I got to a tent with incense and crystals and a throw blanket with Buddha on it. Inside were several shirtless guys with dreadlocks and an intense look of satisfaction that was permanently resting on their faces. With them were a few girls who looked just as happy, who looked like their lives had meaning, who looked like their lives had purpose. The first time I walked past their tent, I felt their energy before I saw them, but when I finally did, I knew I had to ask the question of the day, so I went up to them and I said, I'm sorry to bother you, and I don't mean to cry, but you have the most amazing energy, so I must know, do you consider yourselves to be happy people? And I'll never forget, there was a young girl by the name of Amber with flower tattoos and a nose piercing who responded to this question with, I consider myself to be happy, yes, but that's only temporary. It's almost like a book, she said. The more gory details, the more emphasis, the more you have to put into it, the more whole you will become. And so I listened and I understood, and this new stream of ideas that was previously unheard of to me was all that I could think about. I went home, I didn't run since I was on 405 freeway, but I went home. <laughs> and I tore out the pages of my journals and post-it notes and I changed the name of my project. It was no longer happiness in the pursuit of it. Now it had become wholeness and the need for it because I understood that this is what it was really all about. And so this summer long project inspired a poem that I wrote called Vincent Van Gogh Find Yourself. And it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> but no matter how hard we try, we could never find anything as beautiful as the sun, and we never heard anything quite like the sound of the rain padding against the unpaved roads like it was speaking to us in our scope. Our legs that always seemed to wander slightly off track and our minds that wandered a little more than slightly. We don't know who we are because everyone's always told us who we should be. They called us the lost boys and girls, but we knew we were so much more than that. We were soldiers, obstacles. We were the out-of-nowhere thunderstorm with wet socks and a sunny day. We were oddities who didn't have a house, so we made the street corners and deserted sidewalks our homes, begging for money wherever we could and searching for a savior. We didn't believe in God or the devil. We believed in the kindness of strangers. We depended on the stars to find our way back to each other, and we punched holes in walls to rid ourselves of everything that ever held us. We don't make a difference in this world, we fill in. It's what we were born to do. We learn the hard way that life goes on and doesn't stop for anybody. You'll find us in the cracks in the road, the bystanders, the semi-beautiful events, the people you forgot you met. What's your name again? We don't need to be noticed, and we don't need to be remembered, but if you're looking, you'll know where to find us. We'll be on a world tour broadcasting that we we were here. We rested in abandoned apartment buildings and went to funerals for people we never knew. We traveled this continent by foot, knees, and by thumb. We are hypocrites in the teaching. We live vicariously through stories that should not be funny. And we swore to the younger versions of ourselves that we would change something. Someday. But we woke up late. And that someday was yesterday. The sun was our only alarm clock, and we followed the lead of our parents. How many of our parents even make it anyway? We gave up, but that's not where we went wrong. We went wrong believing that we were supposed to be the hero. We never actually found the person we should have saved. We didn't know we were expected to save ourselves. This is why we laugh at the people we see who've got sidewalks more passionate than them. 
They meander around with the chest out and perfectly perform strides. They buy houses to make up for the lack of a home and walk right past the family begging for money on the corner, begging for a home on the corner, begging for a homeless on the corner. The truth is, I think we're jealous of them. You see, we are the family begging for money on the corner, and all that money could have been used to feed half of our population. We chase waves in our veins to remember the way the ocean tastes, recite battered memories of our old favorite movies from the times when we were still sane enough to remember to blink periodically. This is the science of our existence. I promise you, we're not crazy. We've just forgotten who we are for a little bit, but don't worry. One day we'll forget completely and be just the way you want us to be, like you and like he you see. It's all an art. We just paint a little slower than the rest. Thank you. And you see, life puts so much pressure on us to be happy, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. However, one cannot simply be happy all of the time, in fact. Some of the best literature, poetry, art, music, movies, really anything that has ever made you feel something were conceived out of that little chapter of our books that we don't read aloud. And as a young woman sitting in Venice Beach Boardwalk once said to me, sometimes it's more important to be whole than happy because that is what it is really all about. Our entire essence of our being as humans is just to find what you love and let it kill you. The thing that when you come home from doing it, when you finish seeing or experiencing this thing, your eyes should shine a little bright. The bottom of your shoes should be a little bit more worn and your soul should radiate with the innate feeling of being alive. For me, this thing, this uncanny universal thing has always been poetry, human beings. The stories we carry within ourselves that seem to only be reignited at night to hear these stories and to be alive with them. Now. The thing that makes you feel less empty will not always make you feel less sad. It doesn't have to be grand or beautiful. It doesn't even have to be understood. In the simplest forms, in the most rudimentary definitions, it just has to make you feel like an entire person because that is what it is really all about. Thank you. Yeah!